before we get to the risk, I do want to ask you for your reaction to Carlos Berle's claim of possibly setting this new world record for that giant, uh, riding that giant wave. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, first of all, to, uh, to set a world record for riding the biggest wave, I think you need to actually be able to make the wave. And I believe that Carlos did not uh, make that, that ride. So that would be my, my first reaction to, to what he said. I, I know that that, that uh, location has giant surf and, and uh, you know, just the whole, the whole idea behind putting, a, a, you know, a, 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 a measurement on a wave is, is, is very subjective and it's very difficult to really measure the, the true velocity of a wave. And I think to, to uh, you know, to take the height of it and use that as a, as a measurement is kind of like, you know, measuring one side of a cube and, and saying that that's the volume of the cube. So, Lea, Lea, uh, do, I, do explain something to those of us who aren't surfers, but what does it mean to make the wave or to complete the wave? Explain that to us. Well, as a big wave rider, you know, our objective is to be safe. And, and, and the whole thing about making the wave is, is to first catch it, right? And then after you catch it, you want to complete the ride by riding into the safe spot where you finish the ride, where you can be uh, picked up by the jet ski rider in this uh, jet ski driver in this case, or finish the ride where you can safely paddle away from the next wave coming. But if you get uh, hit by the wave after you've been riding it, that's that we call that wiping out, and that's a that's a failed attempt in 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 you know in the school that I went to. So you say Burley failed at this attempt? Well, if he's claiming that he's ridden the biggest wave ever ridden I I'd say maybe he wiped out on the biggest wave ever ridden but you know you cannot you you can't expect to to ride the biggest wave ever ridden and not finish the ride at least that's that's my uh my opinion, of course. All right. Well, well let's uh, look at Carlos Berle saving the life of that fellow surfer. We saw the pictures there. These are very dangerous waters, aren't they? So why do surfers take these deadly risks? Well, you know, uh, part of the reason why people like Carlos and myself go after this is because this is, this is a, you know, a lifelong uh, endeavor. This is something that, you know, that you start practicing for when you're you know four or five years old you start to learn how to surf and then you evolve to this point where you where you're challenged i mean there's a lot of different reasons why people do dangerous things but the one that i know to be the the the, the safe way is you do it because you're called to do it because this you're drawn to this challenge uh, in your heart and this is something that you, you know that you're you're here to do and uh you know as far as what happened uh to carlos's uh partner i mean maya she she uh, doesn't have the skill to be in these conditions and she should not be in in you know in this kind of surf and uh, and i feel like it's carlos's responsibility to 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 take care of her and he's just lucky that that uh, she she didn't drown. Yeah, I mean, he did take care of her, didn't he? He, he? he saved her and she did survive. But in these sorts of situations, how do you control it? I mean, when people are going out in these sorts of conditions and those waters off the coast of Portugal, they're known to be deadly. They're known to be dangerous. They're very rocky. Well, they, I mean, you know, you travel there. In fact, I was invited to come uh, to Europe on this particular swell by some locals that live down there and, and, uh, and could have easily have been there. I mean, w you know, we, we seek these waves out. We look for these locations that, that draw this type of surf there. I mean, you take the precautions by, you know, training for it, you know, wearing flotation devices, having good rescuers, uh, you know, and then having years and years of experience. So, uh, you know, that's 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 the way you make a dangerous situation safe is is uh training and and experience and you know and again uh doing it safely you know we have a saying in navigation right there's old pilots and bold pilots no old bold pilots so uh you know to do this daily you have to you have to uh operate as as safe as uh, you can be